On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Chris Woodruff and I are going to start our conversation on how you build web APIs. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Chris Woodruff. Hey, Chris. Hey, Robert. How are you? Good. Welcome to the show. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to the cozy confines oh, like of Studio this. Business. It's great. Yeah, it's intimate. It's like a there should be a fireplace in here. Or <laughs> that would something. be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> cozy fireplace. Yeah. And Although it's ninety degrees outside, I'm not sure how much we is. need a fireplace no, right now. But come winter right time, now. that would be handy. You may. You may. Chris is here to talk about web API, and yeah. this is an interesting topic. Uh, so web API is basically the modern way of having services running in the cloud that serve up data typically, right? And we've done this before. We've had, you know, Azimex Web Services yep. and WCF, yep. and then there was Web API, and which is, you know, RESTful, and we've been doing this for quite some time. We um, have lots of way. RPC yes. way back in the mm -hmm. day. Yep. Yeah, but I think it's getting a little bit easier to do, and uh, we're going to look at creating them using uh, ASP Core. Yep. Which is will wind up being faster because yep. uh, .NET Core is really fast these days. Um, we'll talk about how you create them, what they look like. So, if you're somebody like me who's kind of coming from the WCF frame, I've written a lot of WCF services. I have a bunch of existing ones that I would love to turn into Web API. Yep. Um, how do you build a Web API? What does it look like? Yeah. What's the plumbing, the routing, and all yeah. the rest of that? Yep. Um, we'll talk about that where you would put all your logic, what that looks like. Um, the benefit, of course, of the Web API is that it gives us our world where you have a service running in the cloud, um, and you, any client, any client at all, yeah. basically passes it a string with a request. Yeah. The service reads that string, goes off and does whatever it does, whether it's written in, whatever it's written in, who cares, yep. and then packages up your data, sends it back as a string, typically in JSON format, yep. and there's really cool tools for working back and forth between JSON exactly. and C Sharp. <laughs> um, if you're a .NET developer, if you're not, uh, then you just get JSON back. Everybody, yeah. and uh, everyone can do right. that with JavaScript. Is right. JavaScript uses JSON. The problem with WCF, of course, is it relied on SOAP, which is yeah. powerful, but then you kind of had to, your client had to have knowledge of SOAP, yeah. and if your client didn't, then you would have to write that support yourself who wants yeah. to do that. Web yeah. API is just completely open yeah. and neutral. So we are leveraging the power of the internet. Yes. So we're leveraging HTTP. Mm -hmm. So everyone uses HTTP. Yep. Um, so we're actually going to leverage the HTTP calls. So, right. so in a sense, you hit the nail on the head. A string comes across, but there's also another piece of information that comes across with it. Mm -hmm. That would be the HTTP verb. Right. So we have to know if, uh, just like SQL, uh, some people don't like to, to talk about HTTP and REST with the SQL kind of nation, kind of the idea, but get for is, some people, get is select. Yeah, there's a put. Is, there's yeah. a post. Right. Yeah, and Add there's a delete. Is insert, update, delete. It's it's crud. It, right. Whatever the well, verb is. is. I know. So what? I know. I do <laughs> right? because for people that are coming into the restful world, it makes things a little bit easier to to show them maybe mm -hmm. use some of their knowledge that they have from from uh, T SQL, and then they can they can kind of understand to be a little more comfortable in the right. HTTP world. So yeah, so um, it's actually really easy. Cool. They have made, I mean, the, the ASP.NET Core team has made things extremely simple. All right, so prove that. Prove it. That's a great segue okay. into demos. Prove okay, it. Prove Let's it. Let's write ourselves Let's do it. a web API. So we're going to write an API that uh, connects up to Is the mouse working? There we go. Uh oh. This is why the clock's hidden, by the way. There we go. That was strange. Okay, so I'll pause a little bit. 
So we're going to build an API against a database that Microsoft created a number of years ago. It's called Chinook. Okay. You ever heard of Chinook? Mm -hmm. So it's delicious Chinook, salmon in addition to being a sample it is, database. It is. I love the salmon. But Chinook is a database that has, uh, it, it simulates a online music store, mm -hmm. the front and back. So I like it because it has a whole bunch of like cool rock artists and albums mm -hmm. and tracks. And it's much more interesting than Northwind. Yes. Anything's more <laughs> interesting. Sorry, I, sorry, but anything's more interesting than Northwind and bicycle parts. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use uh, Chinook. And uh, I actually, Chinook went away. So I don't think Chinook, I have it on my, on my GitHub. Mm -hmm. because it was going away in, what's the old... Uh, going away? I thought data never dies. Well, it doesn't, <laughs> but uh, what's the old uh, uh, Coplex? So yeah. Sh uh, Chinook used to be on Coplex, okay. and then it went down. You can still get it, but no one's updating it because Coplex can't okay. be updated. Okay. So I grabbed everything, and you can find it out on my uh, GitHub All repository, right. my space. We'll put a link to that in the so show yeah. notes. So, uh, so let's do this. So it's really simple. So start, like everything, we're going to start with a new project. So we're going to go under .NET Core, and then we're going to do ASP.NET Core Web App. And I'm going to change over and, and uh, you know, let's browse because I like to use I always put things in my projects folder. Mm -hmm. So, and then let's just call it Chinook Core API. Pretty simple. So we're going to say okay. We get the next stage, and this is going to be an API. We're going to use uh, ASP.NET Core 2.1, mm -hmm. and for this demo. Just to make things easier, I'm going to turn off HTTPS. Um, you can leave it on. I, I mean, you need to leave it on when you actually build something for production. But to make this demo, it's it's just one less thing I have to worry about. Okay. And we're going to if show. If you're making the guts. a public API that anyone can use, would you need HTTPS? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because remember, Google and with Chrome. And I think Microsoft with Edge are uh, setting it up where those browsers, if you don't use uh, HTTPS, you'll start getting warnings or people accessing okay. your API, well, mostly websites, will start getting warnings from browsers. Okay. So it is good to, to use HTTPS. If nothing else, it's all encrypted between your API and, and the uh, who's ever getting it on right. the other side. So, okay. Okay. So we're going to say okay. It's going to stand up everything. Let it kind of figure it out. Let it pull all of its dependencies in. Okay. So what I'm going to do to begin with is the project always comes with some initial controller and some initial logic. I'm just going to delete that. We don't need it. Hmm. And then the other thing is, is under your project properties, if you go to debug, you will find that there will be an API slash values. Because when you first launch your browser, it, it wants to go out to uh, that, that controller that initially created. But we don't want that controller. We're going to create our own. Okay. So I'm just going to say API slash. So let's save that. Now we're at, we're at a good starting point. So I have a number of packages that I have to install. And again, I copied them from a text file. And we're just going to bring that text file in. Let me go grab that. And so we're installing all the packages that we need for Entity Framework Core. Okay. So SQL Server, uh, SQL Server Design, 
and then any framework core tools. Okay. So you need that, especially uh, when you have an existing database that you're going to be generating your um, your models on. Right. And I like having I like using existing uh, databases. Mm -hmm. I'm not really a code first type of person that Kay. does migrations and stuff. I I'm I was a DBA for a couple projects, mm -hmm. so. I like having real databases that are fine, fully tuned and that run well and okay. have good indexes and stuff like that. Right. I'm old fashioned, I guess. Okay, so we have everything that we need. The next thing that we need to do is we need to use a command called scaffold-db-context. And I'm gonna copy this in, I'm gonna paste this in, and I'm going to explain what it is. So it's a command that will generate your DB context and all of your uh, entity models. Mm -hmm. So you give it that command, and then you give it your uh, connection string. So I'm going to run off of a local a local database, and I'm going to use trusted uh, trusted uh, connection. But then you have to give it the type of database that you're going to be using. Right. So that's where it comes in, and the and you have to say Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.SQL Server to say I'm going to be using a SQL Server. Right. Uh, if you're using Azure SQL, use SQL Server. Same it's the thing. Same thing. It's just so SQL Server. It is. Right. And then the last thing you need to do is give it a uh, parameter called output dir. And output dir is where you want all of your generated. Uh, code to, to be put. Mm -hmm. And I just say dash output dir and then space models. Okay. And that will create a models class in your project and then it will put all those new generated files out there. So we're going to run that. It takes a second to, uh, to go through. Don't worry about that. Sometimes you will have that. If I run it again, Sometimes Entity Framework Core is a little funny with uh, scaffold okay. dash db context. So where did I've had you, this. I might have missed this part, but okay. where did you tell it what database you were using? So in my connection string, if you take a look here, oh, I have a okay. server, just server dot. Oh, okay. And so that just means the local server. Okay. the local so it's right SQL there in server. front of me, but it's, it's. And then I have a database just called Chinook, and I, okay. then I just oh, say okay. trusted connection <laughs> equals true. So it's really simple, but you can so have it's a. It's a little behind the scenes here. I can't really read that text. Yeah, sorry. Away. No sorry. worries. Uh, <laughs> it's there. I can, I can uh, increase or I can uh, fix the resolution, I guess. Yeah. Um, no, it's good enough. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, this will generate all of your models. So mm -hmm. at this point, we have our Chinook context. So should be very familiar. Uh, yeah, and so far, this is standard, it, pretty standard stuff. Even, it's Entity yeah, Framework, right? From Entity Framework so far, 6. Right. So yep. it, it's pretty much the same thing. And if you know Entity Framework 6, you should know 99% of right. uh, core. Yep. So it's pretty, it's, there's, there's, I will say core is still a subset mm -hmm. of, uh, in some ways, a subset. It has some things that six doesn't have, but it has lots of things that six has that yeah. it hasn't that hasn't yeah. been brought into the into the. Uh, and then just a side light, you've got the warning with the squigglies because you have your yes. secrets buried in your code. We did an and, entire episode on secrets and management. I will do that. I always do that because okay. I like to hide my secrets. All right. So we, uh, we did a whole episode on that. Good, uh, a few good. Weeks back. Well, that's awesome because that needs to happen. So we're gonna. But we're you can leave it in there for now, if you want. Well, actually, not unless you want to do it. Right now, I can just delete it. Okay. And we're we're not going to worry about it anymore. All right. Because I'll show you how we we take care of it, uh, which you may have already shown in a previous episode. But I'll go through it again for it's people. It's worth repeating, that, though. Yeah. If you want to show it. So. We have this, we have our generated uh, uh, files. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna work on our startup. So okay. startup.cs is the new core way of, of kind of standing up all of your services and doing your dependency okay. injection and stuff like that. 
So, but first, I'm going to go to my app settings. Uh, .json. So app settings .json is is kind of like if you remember the old web.config. Mm -hmm. You can keep a bunch of stuff in there. Well, app settings .json is a JSON file that you can put stuff in there that your your project can go out and get. So I just have some trusted code. So I can put my connection string out here. So in here I have connection strings and then in underneath connection strings in that in that uh, area I have Chinook DB and then the same connection string that we use to generate the files and all mm -hmm. the models and the DB context, same okay. exact one. Now you could give it a different one. You could say, you know what, I have Chinook running locally, but I also have Chinook running up in the cloud right. and I generate it and they're both the same and I want to point my actual APIs up in the cloud. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Sure. So it's just a connection string, but we're going to keep it local. And now we're going to go over to startup and we're going to go into configure services. And in here, we're going to put in some more code. You can see I, I don't like to type. I'm a little lazy. So we're going to put in two lines of code. So in here, and you can see we have some squiggly lines. Uh, let's fix those squiggly lines real quick. So uh, we're going to point to models to get our Chinook context. And then we need to bring in the uh, Microsoft Entity Framework core um, library okay. for our using clauses. So at this point, we have a line that says I have a connection string and I'm going to go through configuration, get connection string, and then uh, it's called Chinook DB. And that's yep. what we did in app settings uh, .json. Okay. So uh, we're just leveraging something that's already been given to us in, in the configuration mm -hmm. uh, object that, uh, that ASP.NET uh, Core gives you. And then we're just going to say, we're going to do dependency injection, and we're going to say services, our services, we're going to inject our DB context. And we're going to say add DB context, it's of type uh, Chinook uh, context. And then in there, we're going to say options, use SQL Server, and then we're going to give it the, the connection string. Okay. So we are we are uh, building and setting up our DB context at the very start of our of our project and injecting it in so that everyone can use it. All right. And no one should be able to get our connection string. It's it's pretty hidden. Um, and also, uh, if you send this out to Azure, Azure will overwrite it through through uh, the web app. Mm -hmm. If you use a web app service, you can actually overwrite that by right. having a setting, by putting a different connection string, yep. and it will inject it into here without you having to change any code, right. which is very nice. So at this point, we have our DB context. It's been injected into our, uh, into our application to be, to be used. So let's go back over to the to the DB context. Uh, before I got rid of everything in on configuring because I don't need that anymore. I've already set up that connection string before I injected it. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, I don't really need to to have that in there anymore. So so at this point we're we're pretty good. Uh, the last thing that we need to do is have our controllers, right? So right. we need to know how we're going to route these, these HTTP calls to the right controllers and actions in those controllers. Right. Okay. And this is really simple yeah, too. Yeah, because you deleted the controller. I did. Controller. Because it was. <laughs> it wasn't the one. It right, wasn't, wasn't the, the one, one I wanted. wanted. Right. So, so let's take a look. So if I say add 
controller. See down here, we have an API controller with actions this using is, yeah, any, one of my uh, favorite features of all time is it'll yes. build the controller for you. Yes, yes. For us lazy people, right? It will, it will at least get you get you the starting. The less point. plumbing I can write, the better. I want to exactly. focus on my business I, logic. I do. I want to. I want to focus on getting something up and running, and then and then really uh, customizing yeah. it to what I want. So model class. We're just going to go through a couple. Although so I do gonna, think there should be, I continue to think there should be the ability to, to do create all. one for all of them. Yeah. So I work at JetBrains, and we have some tools like we have ReSharper, and I'm actually building a plugin for cool. ReSharper to do that. And then it's going to go for Rider, which is our .NET IDE, but I can't say that too much around the Microsoft world. Around here, will it work with Visual Studio? It will work with uh, uh, ReSharper. So okay. It won't work with with, right. uh, but it will if you have ReSharper mm -hmm. installed, it should work with that. So okay. I'm, I'm actually building it right now. Right. So and what that's going to do is it's going to find just like this does with the drop down. Mm -hmm. Right. It's going to find everything, all these different uh, model classes. Yeah. And well, I'll tell you what, if you write it as an extension of Visual Studio, I'll have you on the show to show Yeah, it. maybe I can write That's your Maybe I can write it also as should an be extension. Able to. So, oh, you should be able to. Right. It should be that hard. So I'm going to do album. So album is a model class in our in our uh, API. And then I'm going to say my data context class is that Chinook context. Mm -hmm. And then it will auto-generate the controller name. Yep. You can change it if you want, but what you have to remember is because MVC has some conventions, yeah. you have to have the model name controller kind of has right. to go. The plumbing is the plumb expecting yeah. it's called album yes. controller, so it's easier yeah. just to leave it that way. It is. It's Otherwise, just you'd have to go mess with the mess plumbing. Mess with the plumbing, no, and you no have to point. start really adding a lot of code to start up. Yeah. And, so which, now you're moving away from your idea of focusing on yes the yes. the code that you need to write yes yeah and you can do it but it yeah it it takes a lot more uh, work and hoops to go through so so it's setting up a uh, controller let me close out the models I'll open up the controller folder so you can see that and in here it actually set up our route for us. So mm -hmm. remember, we had API, so it's API slash controller yep. name, whatever the controller name, which in this instance, it's going to be uh, albums. And it set up everything that it needed. It actually has already set up the uh, a internal private read-only property for Chinook context, mm -hmm. which on the constructor, uses dependency injection to get that context and so everything can use it. So okay. so we don't even have to write any code to connect our, uh, initially connect our uh, right. constructors or connect our controllers to our uh, DB context. Yep. Now, now for demo purposes, this is great. I, like, right. I love this. Advanced for production, I don't do it this way. And we'll look at another episode where we'll look at some more advanced architectures. Okay. But but for this simple demo, uh, this is fine. So we have uh, a command called get album. And you can see that they're all uh, marked up with some annotations. Mm -hmm. So we have HTTP get. So the one thing that differentiates a controller from uh, traditional MVC and one that uh, that we use in web APIs is that we decorate our actions with these HTTP verb uh, attributes. So, so you can see that we have HTTP get down here. When we want to get a single album, we have HTTP get, and then it has an ID that comes along with it. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a HTTP put. So this will do an update. Mm -hmm. So if we want to update an album, um, we will we will set up that annotation of HTTP put, uh, and then we have a post. So this will add a new album 
to whatever data repository that, that uh, we're using on the back end, SQL Server in our case, and the last one is HTTP delete. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use those four, we're going to leverage those four HTTP verbs right. for this demo. So the and scaffolding built your basic CRUD. It built pretty much everything right. that you and need then to do. And then if you have more advanced data logic, you can just swap out the actual code in here with whatever you want. Yep. As long as, you know, yeah. it's Entity Framework 6, it's yeah. .NET Core. Yep. So as long as you're writing code that's supported by .NET Core exactly. 2.1 and Entity Framework 6, you can do whatever you want in here, whether it's validation or you're going to different places yep. or you're massaging the data, whatever you need to do, yes. uh, you can put that well, code in here. And it does do some validation. So let's mm -hmm. take a look at the post. We do come in here and it does check to see if if it's valid, if the model right. state's valid. Okay. If it's not, it will send back, uh, it will return a bad request. So a bad request is a 404. Mm -hmm. So you can either, you can, there are calls to send back, you can send back whatever response code, HTTP right. response code that you want, but, um, ASP.NET Core has a lot of these uh, uh, simple things that we can do. So if I want a bad request, I can do that. If I want an OK, I can do that. If I want some kind of a 500 error, there's a, there's a, a ver very verbose mm -hmm. uh, call to do that. Or I can have just respond with specific uh, uh, Response code and then put my own my own message right. into it. So yeah. it's it's quite flexible, but for this we're going to leave it for that. Now one thing I do want to say you brought up the business logic. So I don't know if you're like me, but I don't like to delete data in my databases. I like to deprecate it. Mm -hmm. So I like to just have a bit that says like on off sure. or visible or not visible. So you could come in here into this uh, delete album action, and instead of doing a remove down here, mm -hmm. you could just do an update. Right. You could just update that record yep. and, and or turn that Or archive it or, whatever, or whatever you yeah. want. The, the, yeah. the point is here that you can... You have control. Right, that it wrote some nice templated boilerplate code for you, which yeah. may be all you need, or you can you know, call out to other services, you can, whatever you want. So, so let's add one more controller because you kind of have to have, I like to have at least two controllers. So let's go down here and we'll, we'll do uh, artist. So, and it's already set up. It remembers the last, mm -hmm. the last DB context that you use so you don't have to select that. And we get, we get another one. Now, I'm going to clear this out so we don't see that red. I'm going to build this to make sure it builds. Okay, and then let's see if it will run. Of course it'll run. Why wouldn't it run? It should. It should. It's my least favorite word in I all know. of technology. It should. Okay. It should so, work. So we got a <laughs> uh, page can't be found, which is good because we actually haven't given it a valid route. Right. So all we have up here is localhost and then the port that we're using, and then slash API. So if I said albums, because remember we set up an albums controller, and in there we had a route that said that anything from API slash controller name mm -hmm. would come into there, into that controller, into the corresponding action. And Yay! Voila. Ta -da. We have Look at that. we have it's and and I use a add-in for Chrome that uh, that makes my uh, JSON look mm -hmm. look fine. So if if it looks like this, that you get uh, if you're you get a raw view of it, don't worry, it's it's fine. I just have it parsed so I can kind of see. Okay. Um, and we have it. So and if I want to do uh, let's say 42 is my favorite number. So if I want to say, give me the album 
that the album ID is 42. Mm -hmm. I just say album slash 42. And that route will go to the get with an ID. Yep. And I it's get back 42. I get back album 42. So it's that simple yep. to set up your web API project. Right. That's all you need to do. It's cool. it's really simple. And then all you need to do to call it is pass the correct string. Yep. Um, yep. However that gets done. Yeah. And and you can use a web browser, mm -hmm. but you can't do anything other than a get with a web browser. So if you want to test out and you want to try out your APIs, uh, there's a few different applications that you can use. I use Fiddler mm -hmm. or I use Postman. Okay. And they're both free. Uh, they're both free applications that you can install locally. Uh, Postman will run locally or through uh, Chrome or through, I don't know if there's an edge. Uh, uh, don't know. Don't know. But, but I just run it locally and I can call and I can say, Here's my, here's my uh, uh, string that I'm going to send over and my verb, mm -hmm. and I can even set up headers in my HTTP call to, to set up things like authentication and stuff like that. So we're not even going to look at the, all of that, but there's a whole rich uh, experience around authenticating around your web APIs. Mm -hmm. And you can do that yourself. Yep. Or there's third-party uh, companies in the right. in the partners uh, ecosystem that will that will uh, allow you to to wrap and okay. help you out with your authentication. And now that you have this API written, tested, proven, you can uh, run it in IIS locally. You can publish it up to Azure. You can run it in a container. There's all kinds yeah. of things you can do. Yeah, because it's uh, ASP.NET Core, yeah. I can run it on, on Mac OS yep. or Linux. Mm -hmm. I can, like you said, I can I can run it on any number of different uh, uh, instances of Azure. Yep. So I can run it on a, a, a web app that is of type Windows or of type Linux. Yep. Uh, I can put it up in a, in a container. And because Linux containers are so cheap on Azure, mm -hmm. it's, it's perfectly fine to right. throw it up, yep. on a, uh, up on that. Uh, Kubernetes, you can use it with Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you can do, cool. you can put it just about anywhere. So right. uh, yeah. So there you go. So it's, it's that simple. It is simple. It is. <laughs> you it's, said earlier it's easy to do. I said prove it. You proved it. Yeah. Awesome. So so I do want people, if if I ask anyone if you're going to be using Web API, learn a little bit about HTTP. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Same thing. If you're going to oh with Xamarin, if you know C sharp and Xaml, you can build. Mobile apps, exactly. of course you can, but you need to learn about iOS and Android. You need yeah. to learn about the operating system. Yeah. If you're going to build web API, you need to learn some web stuff. Yeah. But this seems like a if you are coming from more of a client side world and you want to start learning web stuff, this seems like a great place to start. It is. It is. It's. I mean, it's simpler. I think it's simpler than than MVC because mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about views and you don't have to worry about all that. You're just basically getting those those HTTP HTTP calls, right? And sending up your controller, and then you can build whatever logic you, you want to use. Uh, more advanced stuff, you can use a repository pattern mm -hmm. to pull out your business logic from your controller actions, which I don't uh, suggest that you put your code, your business logic directly into those actions. I build them into uh, repositories that I can, that uh, I put into other projects so I can kind of share them and okay. I can test them. So the biggest reason why I don't put everything into my controllers is because of testability. Right. Okay. Because I want my API calls and my business logic to be independent so I can test and, right. and make sure that they're working right independently. Cool.
Awesome. So this is going to wind up being three parts. Hopefully so three parts. <laughs> and maybe yeah, more. We are. Uh, yep. We'll do three now. Yep. We hopefully will do follow-up ones later. Yeah. So we just covered the overview. We're going to do some integration testing next. And then you're going to show us some best practices in yep. part three. Yes. Cool. So hope you enjoyed this one. And we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.